Poker Live podcast. Some people thought, Brad, that I was only going to do one show and I was going to disappear for another three years from YouTube. But I called up Brad. I said, Brad, come on by. Yeah. Brad came by the GTO headquarters here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, listen, man, we got the man Brad Owen in yeah. the house over here. Fresh off his uh, YouTube uh, poker content domination, playing high stakes poker now. The man is an ambassador. He's a business owner. He's a content creator and soon to be a father. And uh, I know everyone, all your fans out there are excited about that. I'm excited about that, Brad. So uh, thank you for coming on by before this week happens. And yeah. uh, baby's born in two days. So wow. I'm very excited about that. Getting, getting the house all prepped, getting my last poker sessions in to uh, kind of have a pipeline of videos to, to get to, you know? Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned you were playing a bunch at Bellagio. You were mm. battling a bunch of high stakes over there. Yeah. Going through these 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 bigger, big swings. Yeah, huge swings. Can't wait to kind of share the vlogs. They'll come out in a couple of weeks, but just like 30, 40K pots. Uh, don't really want to give too many spoilers, but um, some of the, probably the most exciting month of poker that I've played was maybe this month. December was up there as well, though. Mm -hmm. I'm putting out those videos uh, now from the WPT World Championship, and that was a wild, wild run. Best month of poker that I've ever had was was uh, during that time. Was that time, yeah. So basically now it seems like you're kind of regularly playing, uh, you know, not as many tournaments, except maybe some big tournament series. If WPT has a big tournament series, you'll play some of those. I think you played like the 25K or the 50K or something like that. Yeah. The biggest buy in that you played in a tournament. And now you're also mixing in a lot more high stakes cash games too, as you mentioned, right? So you're playing yeah. at the Blagi, you're playing what, 20 by 50, 100 or 100, 100, or how, how, does, how does the games work there? How do the stakes work there? Basically, uh, a couple times a week, there are two games running, but they're both organized by the same people in Bobby's room. So there'll be a 25-50 game, and they'll sim simultaneously run a 100-100 game. And sometimes that game's even a little bit bigger. And so a lot of times, someone will start out in the 25-50 game, and then when a seat opens up in the 100-100, they'll get switched over there. But uh, I played 100-100 once, and then I played 25-50, I think four times in the last, like, two weeks or so well yes yeah, so you're 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 kind of getting uh, comfortable with those high stakes it seems like it seems like you've kind of been there for for a little while how long you've been playing the those cash games on a consistent basis because i know you bounce around between small stakes and meetup games and kind of play anything it, it almost seems like yeah I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy to play all stakes uh these games are just really good i mean they're reserved games so the guys who are running them know what they're doing and they try to keep the amount of pros in uh, to a minimum and they there are some business guys that are in it that make the game really profitable so as often as I'm invited I'm pretty much trying to play in them yeah it's cool because you also get to make content so then you make the video and then you put it on your YouTube channel and most of your YouTube videos are getting hundreds of thousands of views I mean people are are still very interested and up to date on the career of Brad Owen it's pretty crazy to see man for, for how long you've been doing it you still got such this this crazy support and this crazy community, you know, it's uh, it's, it's wild. How do you what's what's the what are your thoughts about just like all that? Those people still come out. They want more. If you play six sessions, they want to see the six sessions. They're excited for them. Yeah, I, I just since I started the YouTube channel seven and a half years ago, I've always kind of wanted to push myself to be as good of a poker player as I can. And then with the content creation stuff, you want to kind of push the envelope as well. But I've always tried to kind of balance that out where I'm really just moving up in stakes as I normally would progress if I wasn't doing the content. You know, like I, I, I want to like try to be responsible. So win at certain stakes for a while and then keep moving up. And I've had success pretty much at all the stakes. And so now I'm... Uh, you know, move, moving up to Bobby's room. Bobby's room. Yeah, I mean, I guess you, I see what you're saying about the stakes because, you know, once you start becoming an ambassador, you become uh, someone who's making money from content, from products, from services, you have training courses, you have affiliate products, then at that point in time, it's easy to sort of take that money, which we see some streamers doing now. We see some content creators doing this yeah. now where now they feel like they got to play 200, 400, they're having these massive swings. I mean, we're seeing a bunch of, not a bunch, but we're seeing a couple of the guys do it. You know, Mariano's doing it, Rampage is doing it. You know, Wolfgang kind of, he just got to the high stakes and had some winning sessions. So we're probably gonna see more of him there. So it seems very like surreal almost seeing the, all these like 
people go from content creator to ambassador to high stakes player to, you know, really having success in all these different arenas. I feel like that's the new, like that is almost like a a new way to do poker that really was never there before. It definitely takes off a lot of stress when you have income coming in from, yeah, affiliate marketing stuff and uh, and the YouTube ad revenue. Um, But still like Andrew and I, we we grew up like grinding two, five, 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 ten. Yeah, we were before we had the YouTube stuff, I, I went broke at one point and then came back to poker for a living uh, in 2015. And uh, I still kind of have like that mentality of kind of trying to do things correctly with the bankroll. It is interesting because we do dedicate so much time to creating videos on YouTube where if we were just playing poker full time, uh, rather than spending a lot of time focusing on content creation that we would have made you know a lot of money playing poker that we kind of sacrificed uh and we probably would have studied more and gotten better so i don't know it's kind of it's kind of an interesting it's kind of an interesting thing yeah interesting thing to think about i mean you know it depends what you like to do as well you know you've been grinding these videos like you said you started channel seven years ago and um you know both both like you said a mentioned andrew as well you guys both been putting these videos out for so long documenting your journeys documenting your stories it's, um, you know, I, I've had to take a break. I mean, I, I personally couldn't, you know, I, I've had to take breaks over the years. It's just been, you know, you guys don't seem to take a break. You don't, you don't, you don't really seem to like take any time off. What's, how yeah. do you, how do you maintain that consistency, that dedication, that focus? I really enjoy it. I, I love playing. And then when I play an interesting session, I can't wait to kind of share that with people and see and, and insert stupid jokes in the vlogs and just see people's reactions to it, see what they like and, and don't like. And, uh, that part's all fun. When I'm like writing the scripts out, I'm I'm on GTO Wizard and other solvers, like looking up what I should have done. So that's kind of my study time. Also, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of things that I want to accomplish in poker. You know, I, I it's mostly in tournaments now because I've had some big final tables. I really want to take down a big tournament, uh, and I keep kind of knocking on the door, getting close, yeah, but um, haven't quite haven't quite accomplished that yet. Yeah, so it sounds like you stay focused by enjoying what you're doing and kind of like, yeah. and, and instead of, because some content creators, once you make your content, you're like, it's like a chore. It's a pain. It's like, oh my God, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. Whereas it sounds like when you're making this stuff, you're putting good energy into it. You're putting good vibes into it. Something that you want to be doing. It's something that you look forward to seeing the reactions of your fans. And to me, I mean, that that's incredibly important. It's a very underrated characteristic of a of a content creator is to enjoy what you're doing and like what you're doing and, you know, challenging yourself to when you're doing it, right? Like you mentioned earlier. So it's interesting. Now you're taking that same approach to put to to tournaments. Yeah. And now you're saying my main goal is to win a big event. I want to get a big score. I want to win a big WPT event. And uh, like you said, right, there's really no way to hack that process. You're right. You just kind of do it. And it it might might take a while. Right. And it, it, it is tough balancing all the cash games that I'm playing and content and everything. Like I'm not really playing that many tournaments a year. You know, there's a right. couple couple times I go hard during the summer and then December for the for the world championship stuff. But other than that, I don't even know if I've, I played one poker go tournament this year. I think that's uh, mm-hmm. that's it so far. So there's there's some tournaments coming up that I'm excited for. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll just continue to improve and I feel like every time I get experience running deep in something, it helps for the next time. You know, you learn little things and and try and go uh, further and further. What do you what do you what do you picking up? Because because it's a good point. Because you are a cash game player, so you're still adjusting to tournaments and yeah. tournaments. When you run deep, it's a way. It's not anything like cash game at all. It's a completely different arena. Yeah. Well, so that 50k was really cool because I was able to compete with Jason. Like the final table was. Jason Kuhn, uh, Ike Haxton, Bonomo, um, yeah, a, b- a bunch of other people. Uh, Ike had the mask. Seth on. Davies, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I, I don't care. The guy, the ma- guy, want to wear a mask, but people on Twitter, they love it when he wear a mask. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, <laughs> he, you know, he's trying to put people on tilt or whatever. I think that's kind of- Taking safety useful. precautions, Brad. He's taking <laughs> versus he's a safe guy. I like Hollywood X is a safe guy. Yeah. He needs his mask, I mean. But it. anyway, when I'm, when I'm playing, when I'm running deep in something and, and I'm around these guys and I've played with Vogel Singh and a bunch of other guys, 
uh, during the 50K and also during the 10K event. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just look at what they're doing and try to pick up on uh, on anything that I can and, and get better. But like ICM stuff is something that is really brand new to me. Um, I need to do a lot more studying with that. But uh, I feel like I've learned a decent amount even the last six months and it's helped me ladder up but uh, perhaps sometimes I'm playing a bit too safe and need to need to ramp up the aggression. What, what, so what do you to, see? So when you're around Kuhn, when you're around Hollywood, when you're around Justin, what do you what are you seeing that's different in those guys that you're not seeing in other events? Jason, he just did some wild stuff on the bubble uh, as the chip leader going against uh, Cabrell, who is like second or third in chips. Uh, Kuhn was just like three bet ripping small blind. Um, any anytime Cabrell would open on the button for just like piles, he was just it was it was ridiculous, and it's a hundred and eight k money bubble. So uh, for me, mm. that's so much money. Um, for these guys, it's what they do every four, day. Four buy-ins or two buy-ins or <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, right. It's yeah. like barely nothing. So, uh, but yeah, it, it was just cool to watch. Uh, like Foxen, he he actually stone bubbled it. Um, Chidwick soft bubbled it and then it was just insane for me to be around all these guys that i look up to and respect so much um and to just yeah see them like in the zone you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's kind of i used to love playing against the best players seeing the strategies they're using seeing how they might handle themselves and online you know it's different you can't see them in person you get to see their demeanor you get to feel their energy and I, I do think there's a lot to table presence, the way you kind of can make other people feel at the table. Yeah. And, you know, very there is that intimidating presence that you could potentially have. And I think people probably feel that when they play against you. They feel like Maybe you're five, ten. But. Yeah, like you're you're one of those guys. Like, oh, damn, there's Brad. This guy's been doing this for so long. So, you know, now you get a little taste of how maybe you make other people feel at the table. And yeah, maybe it makes you more aware of your own presence at the table when you're playing against your normal games. You might be say, hey, I know how to turn it on. Yeah. I saw how these guys turned it on. These guys, they just kind of exude so much confidence because they're in their element, you know, and I, I don't have that at the 50K level. I might have that when I'm playing like 1Ks and 1500s and stuff yeah. uh, and occasionally, you know, some other spots and 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 definitely in cash games, I feel really comfortable and and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it was just it was just wild to I, I loved it. Yeah. So. You know, training right now, obviously training's evolving so much and there's all these different trainers and programs and, mm -hmm. and, and you can like, you know, with Rue, the G2 Wizard AI, you can put like custom inputs and it's like the game is changing for building strategies. And so what kind of tools or what kind of training or coaching are you doing to stay up to date? I have to kind of make something a game. So, you know, I want to get to a million subscribers on YouTube. You, you got to have something out in front of you that you're working towards. Otherwise, it's really easy to get kind of complacent and, and also burnt out. Um, so getting to a million subscribers would be really cool. And then winning a tournament would be really cool. Um, so I, I'm, I'm fortunate that there are a lot of poker companies that want to work with me because I have the YouTube channel. So all the coaching sites kind of compete to get advertisement spots on my channel. I also don't want to like just spam people with advertisements on the on videos all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm really selective with what companies I work with and um, how often I'm kind of promoting uh, certain things. But anyway, I, I have free access to pretty much all the sites, so I really enjoy kind of looking through those and taking uh, tidbits from each one of them. Uh, I, I, I worked with Nick Petrangelo for the Upswing uh, Smash Live Cash course, which, uh, you know. Sounds I, like it's did good. <laughs> Sounds yeah. like it helped you, out, helped you out a lot, right? Yeah, I mean, Nick is just one of the world's absolute best players. And I definitely learned a lot from him. And sometimes it's not even super kind of tangible where like you're talking to him and, and you absorb stuff, but it's not like you're going to go out the next session and things are going to work immediately. It just it takes a long time to to find these spots and mm -hmm. for everything to kind of work together to com really com add com to the bottom compounds, line. Yeah. When I yeah. work with my coaches and hold them two card PLO, I mean, they blow my mind every day. I'm like, what did this guy just say? Like, oh, my God, they're so it's amazing how good holding players are these days, at, especially yeah. the online wizards. So a guy like Nikki P, I mean, this guy's locked in high stakes cash, high stakes tournaments for you to be able to go through that process with him. Yeah, had to be just eye opening by just kind of seeing how he's handling himself. Yeah, yeah. Have, having uh, 
you know, just his, his telephone number is pretty cool. Yeah. Are you sending them hands? Are you guys, do you talk hands? Do you have like any friends or do you still do the hand histories to friends? I mean, the, the vlog is, is, you know, kind of that, right? But yeah, I, most of my friends, uh, I don't, I don't really talk about hands too much with friends. Like when Andrew and I get together, usually we end up talking about just other stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so a lot of poker players get well eventually like year 10 you say hey i'm gonna stop exchanging hands like i already kind of have a good idea of maybe yeah. what to think about here or do here and a lot of your study or maybe le learning more you know heuristics that you can apply to a bunch of different spots versus like going over a single independent hand and finding some sort of interest in that single independent hand which you still can i mean you know depending on how nerdy you want to get with it so yeah you know yeah do you have a, do you have a preferred um, tool right now you're using or any anything out there that you're fine because I because I, I, I mean I'm using a bunch I'm curious I, what I, I'm using uh, GTO Wizard right now uh, I, I like using that it's just like really quick to get outputs mm -hmm. um, I have uh, Pio but I don't honestly I, I don't really use it much yeah and then I know I know um, Upswing just came out with uh, Lucid GTO so they gave me a version of that to test. I think that just came to the market. Yeah, it just came. I've been I've been using that for heads up. I've been using yeah. that for six max testing that uh, testing that out. I, I try to test that every software program. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with software designers to potentially build something of my own one day, sort of like my own big poppy big poppy trainer. You know, I don't know what's going to be in there, but uh, big poppy trainer. I don't know what it's going to be called, but it can be called anything theoretically. But I'm like yeah. I, I'm super. Like, I, I love the trainers. I love playing with yeah. them. I love like figuring out new strategies, and it's so much more fun than like playing online poker, which is really generally boring. Sometimes you know that people could be like it's just it's not very safe. You know, like I don't I don't go on any poker site, and I'm ever like yeah like. Like it just always feels weird these days. I'm not to say you can't win money, not to say you can't figure out strategies. You can always game select. You always know how to find a bad player and take win against a bad player. And you got to be more diligent than ever at online. But I found that not gambling has been really fun. Just like building strategies because the programs have leaderboards where it'll tell you, you know, it'll be gamified. Like you said, yeah. it'll say there's a score here. You can try to get 99% or you can try to play the hands out with the bot in a specific situation and test yourself there too. So I saw that on Lucid GTO mm -hmm. um, and I, I wasn't quite sure. I, I never input uh, like a username. It just let me play. So I wasn't, I kind of wanted to get up on the leaderboard. Yeah, big, I, big poppy, big poppy two card crusher was. I was to talk to Mike Brady about that. Yeah, Brady, to, Brady, Shout out to, to Brady. How to sent. figure out how to um, get my name up on the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, you should. I mean, it's getting high now because these guys. One guy said on on posted on Instagram. He said he played for eight hours. But you input like your own screen name. At yeah, some big point? poppy two card I never, crusher. Yeah, I never. I never yeah, you uh, got it. And it's custom. But I, had I was to find playing it. on it though. So I don't yeah, know. yeah, I had to find it. I did, it was it wasn't it wasn't evident. Okay, so so tools trainers. You know, kind of sounds like that. What about for, um, you know, coaches, Nikki P, you know, you yeah. mentioned like courses too. Like there's just, the reason I ask is there's so much shit out there that, I mean, I'm figuring out for myself too. And I know a lot of fans out there are feeling the same thing. Like yeah. they want to know, you know, what are these guys who are really in the streets, really grinding, having success? Like what what are they finding is something they're using? I mean, Pio is like the best. The best, yeah. That's what Nikki P yeah. He's always, anytime we have our coaching sessions, he's like, all right, well, let me run this really quickly. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, do some node locking or whatever, and then uh, figure out the output and and then go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never really used Pile much for, for Hold'em because I, I really just started studying more Hold'em in the past couple of years. And I'm, I'm more of a GTO wizard guy now. And yeah. uh, I love I love the AI on there. It's like so... It's so quick and easy. That, yeah. That part is great about it. Yeah, um, I've seen another one. I just tried a different one for PLO called PLO Genius. And uh, I'm, I'm meeting with them on Wednesday to maybe do something with them. So yeah. this is like for PLO. Yeah. And I'm excited about that. I mean, I think GTO Wizard is all based on PIO stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So they just take those solutions and then they put them in a database. So you just you just run the spot and mm -hmm. it's like already on there. So you don't have to wait for it or anything. Right. So that's why with the new edition, which is like kind of game changer in training, is that you can edit the variables that are ranges and you can vet area, you can oh, edit nice. the inputs. Yeah. So normally you can't necessarily edit a range and then get an right. instant input. You'd have to take time to be able to do it. Or if you try to input, uh, you want to change how deep stack you are. You want to change maybe the bet size strategies. You want to, you can do all sorts of preparation and strategy building so in this. Is that with the AI thing? Correct. Yeah. So that, that it, was like a little bit intimidating for me to try to figure out. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. I, I didn't really look into it too hard. 
Well, that's I'm why I got the like, coaches. The coaches have been helping me out. I'm like, Tasha Tombos, you know, he's been out there helping me understand G2 Wizard program. So yeah. he's, uh, yeah, like, you know, that's what I told him. I was like, you guys, like, people have no idea how to use this, really. Yeah. It's, so, it's so complicated. But you can still get a lot from different parts of it. I feel like that program, it goes from intermediate guy can learn something, newbies can learn something, but then the best of the best in the planet can really learn something too. So yeah. it kind of caters to different tiers and, you know, depend, it does, all these tools really depend on how you how you use it. Yeah. You know, even like a hold manager. I don't know, do you ever use hold manager before? I, I don't use hold manager. Do you use any of the, the trackers on their phone that like track, you can put your sessions in there, like the tracker analytics six or anything like that or Bing or? Uh, I I just use poker base. I was using poker income um, to track everything. You're talking mm -hmm. about income and stuff. Yeah, like well, there's some programs. Like I just I just was been talking with this founder. I think it was a poker analytics six, and it it can just you can put in different things about the session. It's basically a data tracker, but instead of having like online poker where it automatic you could you could set up a system on Holder Manager where the program sent the hand in there and then it just gave you all your stats. So if you played a thousand hands, we just have all your stats for your session. Huh. Whereas with live poker, you would actually have to edit in yourself. And sure. what I find in that is that you can learn a lot from visualizing that data because you see whenever I play 10 hours, I always lose. Whenever I play three hours, I'm winning. When I play at this time, I'm winning. When I play these stakes, I'm winning. And instead of you having to manually track it, it gives you this visualized output. So okay. for me, I found those in the past that were valuable. I'm using those now too. So I'm not sure if you have a preferred one you're using or if yeah, you're... I, I, maybe I need to maybe I need to get into that more. Probably. Yeah. Well, these were the keys. Like the tools that made really good online poker players are all had to do with data. Yeah. And tracking your data, being able to understand your weaknesses in your game, and then being able to plug the, the weaknesses in your game. Yeah. But I feel like I'm just wondering. I, I guess I'm just wondering what exactly uh what type of data you're looking at in those things mm -hmm. um because you can filter a lot of those by uh you know like which location what day of the week yeah for live poker you don't stakes, get as much yeah you don't get as much stuff. yeah yeah but um but like are you are you talking about but can you you do you input hand data as well like hand so you could so you could right i mean this is like the next version i just met with this one company I'm just giving all these free shouts to these guys, but Poker GPT and Poker GPT. So we're just shooing uh, like every. Yeah, I, listen, I'm not, I, I've met with all these companies. Like I'm meeting with founders. I'm open. I'm open up meet with any founder about what they're doing. So I'm just learning about so many yeah. new ideas because I'm trying to invest in the best companies I can find right now. So I'm talking to founders all the time about what they're doing, what is their vision, what do they what do they want to create, and how can I help? Whether it's an investment, whether it's money, whether it's my friends, whether it's my time, whether it's we take a call once in a while like i hope yeah. you know you want to reach someone I, I make the connection for you so this guy poker gpt you can put in the hand history into the ai uh bot and then you talk to it so okay. it can you can get the feedback from the hand it's like a it's like a companion it's like instead of having for you andrew to text a hand do it would be you text a hand to the bot that's pretty cool and the bot yeah. can kind of talk to it I'll have to try that out but i don't know i'm not i'm not really like going that deep with with talking to my hand quite yet but yeah Maybe one day. I don't know. I mean, are you following much of the AI AI evolution of, of I, life or poker or anything I, I like feel that? Like, yeah, I need to get into that way, way more. Mostly, I'm just wa I'm just uh, looking at like dystopian uh, <laughs> like predictions about AI. No, and stuff. you got to the good ones. Don't get those ones, Bobby. All they talk about they they promote the worst case scenario oftentimes with a lot of these things. So the things that you see, are, they're never like, hey, it's gonna make it better here. It's more like, well, it's actually gonna kill humanity here right. and you're not gonna exist in the state that you're in anymore. What was that one that, the AI that makes videos and there were these puppies playing in the snow? That, that one looks Sora. awesome. Sora. I wanna get, I wanna understand that one. Is that is that one out now? No, nah, it's a private one, I think, oh, okay. for now, yeah. They were just they uh, were just flexing and trying to probably drive up the price and raise more money and stuff like I that see. get people excited. That they're, one looks sick, like you could make, you can make some really, really cool stuff. Oh yeah. Are you worried as a content creator who's, you know, has the position you have in, in this poker market? Are you worried about AI potentially disrupting what you built, or do you feel like you can use AI as a as an advantage for, for your channels? I guess that's a pretty good question. I think right now, you know, things are going so so well with the real live footage uh, that I'm pretty focused on that. But I'm. When I saw that Sora one or whatever, mm -hmm. I immediately thought about like, oh, how could I, how could I use this in my own videos? So I haven't really spent a lot of time worrying about whether or not it would uh, negatively affect the channel. But I, I, I think, 
I think there would be some cool ways to implement it and, and just make videos better in general though. Mm -hmm. What about you? Are you, is that something you're concerned about? Um, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I feel like these AI programs solve all the things I used to dislike about making a lot of content because I really like never liked to cut anything down. I love to like yeah. do a three hour show and like, fuck it. Like I'm leaving, I'm le I want that to be it. But now with the programs, it's so easy to repurpose, to get words out of any video. Like I basically, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's been game changer for me. It really got me excited to make content again because I, I really didn't wanna, you know, I just don't like all the, all the having to repurpose, which is what you really got to do. And, you know, unless you're, you know, your scratch is so good and which, you know, could be depending on the kind of videos you're making. But for what I like to do, I like to show highlights. I like to, I like to really like make, you know, I got a complex strategy for how I like to promote things. So I like to use all the platforms together and what I'm doing, which just takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of creative energy too. And then you got to be with your program and you, I'm the one, you know, editing it because that's just what I've always enjoyed doing. You know, I think you're, you've kind of been the same way with a lot of it. So now these AI programs are basically like my coworker, where now instead of me having to do it, I can plug so I can plug any video in to one of my programs and it gives me the description of the video, the highlights of the video. I can I have my prompts I use for every single video when I'm studying on YouTube, where it basically breaks down what are the most important takeaways here? What should I remember? What follow ups could I research here? So now you can kind of do that for your own content if you want to break down, like, let's say we're talking and I want to you know go crazy with it. Now I'm able to repurpose that and make true bangers at a much more efficient rate and quicker. So theoretically, you can do a lot more with that on marketing and on these like multi-channel campaigns that you could do before, but it was a lot of work. You had to have a big team, you know, not to say people couldn't do this kind of stuff. And I feel like those programs have allowed me to build a new strategy. And that's why I'm excited to come back. Nice. Yeah. You know? I mean, I feel like we should just be making UFC videos and then I should have kept it up, man. I made that one UFC. I, you UFC. Made, you made two or three, I thought. Yeah, I made five, four or five, okay, three yeah. or four or five. Yeah, but it was like such an easy format where me talking about the news, like people, yeah, like I was just talking about what's happening. Oh, Habib is gonna, he's threatening to leave the UFC if his demand isn't met. And then you post an Instagram of the shot and you just talk about what's happening. You give your opinion. Yeah. Do you still have those videos up or no? Yeah, yeah, they're still up. Yeah, that was wild. So nice what thing. year was that? 20... 2018, 2017. 2018, yeah. So uh, you you put up a handful of these UFC videos and they just like one of them got like 30 plus million views. Maybe it's closer to 40 like, now. No, I think it was like 26 or 25. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. My first ever non-poker video. That's wild. I know. Imagine, imagine. Yeah. But yeah, I thought about that a lot. I mean, I remember your, your, your channel just uh, blew up in terms of subscribers and everything um and then you and then you stopped putting out those ufc videos <laughs> yeah like i i was always felt kind of weird trying to grind for subs and now it now it's a normal thing you know everybody's got like these shorts and they, everyone's got a lot of subscribers now so it's not as abnormal to make content specifically to get subscribers which i uh, never really made content to get subscribers i made content yeah. that i wanted to make that i thought was fun my strategy is very out of line for youtube for how you theoretically should be doing it so now when I come back, I get to decide, do I want to play GTO or do I want to play out of line? So I know how to get a lot of, I, I mean, it's very straightforward how you get views, how you get subscribers, how you get people talking about any topic that you can report on or talk about or a poker game or whatever, right? Like I could start challenging anybody I want. You know what I play poker? I'm, I'm playing anybody heads up right now. So, you know, it gives you a lot of flexibility when you're thinking about what to do. So if, if you want to hunt for you know, that sort of thing, metric you can. So I'm just, I'm just deciding what I want to do. How do you think about that? Cause I feel like you've got your system set up where for you, you're like a machine with it. I got super lucky where I almost took my first vlog down as soon as I put it up like an hour into it. It had 18 views after an hour. And then I was like, <laughs> I don't even think I want friends and family to actually <laughs> see this stuff. So Damn. almost took it down. Luckily I just kept it up and then the next day it started getting like a couple hundred views. Um, like two days later, I had like 200 subscribers. I could just see it, uh, you know, really kind of taken off immediately. And then the first month I had 100,000 views, um, I think 3,000 subscribers and I, I, it just did well. Uh, I think after a year I had like 20,000 subscribers and I never really thought about anything too much in terms of my strategy. I, did, I, I was just like, I like to do this like my my format's pretty much been the same since i started it hasn't really changed yeah, that much. much yeah and luckily people liked the kind of content that i enjoyed 
making. Well, well they got, now they got to follow you from your start when you first started with eight views to <laughs> now you're playing some of the biggest high stakes games. You're a co-owner of the lodge. You're yeah. a world, you're one of the first World Poker Tour ambassadors. Basically, I think they've really ever had outside of their homegrown team. So you essentially are like, if you look back in the history books, and we talked about maybe about this last time, like you're a, you're a pioneer in a lot of ways of your style and your strategy. Like you and Andrew, one of the first guys that really came up. Now we've seen a lot more people use the platforms to access the ability to be discovered a lot quicker. Like I'm seeing on Instagram, yeah. there's some trend where like a vlogger like just put his face there for like five seconds and like put like quote over it. He's like, oh, they said I couldn't do it. But I, and then it's like a bunch of shots of them playing poker, but I did it. And then they're holding like a wow. trophy and it has like 800K. I'm like, this is not the same world that we were in when even eight years ago with this whole discovery features of, of the short form content. I, I feel like right now, in some ways, I think content could be a lot tougher. In, in some ways, it's easy in poker because kind of the formula is out there so mm -hmm. people can just kind of copy it and get to and have a certain level of success not that many people really try to differentiate themselves you know they right. they, they do like that tried and true method and copy either me or or you know someone else in the in the industry um but it would be cool to see a little bit more creativity it's hard right well, we it's would... just like you're showing poker hands and there's not like that well, we've, we've seen it lately, right? Where you had, I think maybe Corey was one of the first people that did it, Corey mm -hmm. Irving, he did it where he said, I'm, I'm making a bankroll challenge basically, right? He made a bankroll challenge in a different kind of way, a more degenerate way. And now we've seen guys like Kevin Martin come in. Now he's streaming his whole life. Yeah, I mean, he's like wild. streaming, you know, streaming his whole life 24 yeah. seven. So it seems like maybe that's a new trend that's emerging where people like package these challenges. You know, it's a bankroll challenge in the day or what, it's the same thing you do every day, but you just have to like give it a title. You have to give it a yeah. theme. You have to give it a name. You have to give it uh, a beginning and end. And um, it seems like a, a new trend emerging right now. Those two guys in particular, what they're doing is like really creative. I, honestly, I haven't seen uh, Corey's stuff, but I've heard a lot about it. Andrew and I, we just actually uh, had a drink with him like two nights ago. Um, and, and everything that he's kind of told me about his channel and that I've heard from other people, uh, it just seems like crazy. And, and, and that's like kind of not really what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, where these people are just doing like the most outlandish stuff. You know, Corey's putting his whole bankroll on like bets or, or whatever. I don't, or I, don't, like I don't believe session. any of these. I don't believe they are. Like, I don't Like Kevin Martin right. said he's starting from zero. I'm like, wait, bro, you sponsored by, yeah. he's sponsored by GG Poker. Come on. Like there ain't no zero. You, you got like a team of people helping you out. It ain't really zero. I think he maybe addressed something like that too. You know, he's trying to have a good time with it. He's trying to have fun with yeah. it. You know, I'm following along, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing how the guy's going to do. I'm, I, I'm interested. So what Kevin's doing is, is is one of the biggest, what's the right word? Like project attempts uh, kind of in poker he's, he's content. He's taking a shot, bro. I mean, history, you gotta, like just to stream yourself 24 hours a day. I think he's mm -hmm. on date. I don't want to date this or whatever, but yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, he's well into it at this point. I think he's got like a thousand dollars and he's going to 5K. Yeah. Or something I don't know, man. He's uh, just to just to. It seems like something you might do, actually. I would have definitely done that when I was younger, hundred yeah. percent. Like when I saw that, I'm like, oh yeah. When I was younger, I would have locked myself in, which is basically my life anyway. You know, I was yeah. playing twenty four seven, grinding, trying to make it, trying to build my own bankroll challenge. So I wish these guys would do like the million to twenty million bankroll challenge, though. I feel like that would be. You know, Doug, Doug has always told me poker is a great way to go from like zero to a million, but not, not a great good. way to go from a million to like five million or a million to 10 million. Yeah, know? yeah, I could see that. Yeah, so I mean, go, make... from going to a million to 20 million, it's hard. There's like it's just hard to be in situations where you're going to take that much money out of the poker economy unless you're just unless playing you're playing a lot of high stakes games. games. I mean, you got to be <laughs> yeah. playing, you know, and, and I want to ask you about this, the new trend we've been seeing with these live high street cash, high stakes cash games where now you've got many streams having these regular high stakes games. And if we, we what we've seen through the data is that now there are these arenas emerging where people are winning millions of dollars in these arenas. This isn't a, this is this is actually not a joke because you have people winning and losing millions of dollars in a single arena that before it literally didn't exist. And so they put some cameras on the table to play it. And now 
people like yourself are always getting invited, I'm sure, to play in any game, right? Everybody's going to want Brad Owen in the game, you know, Celebrity Poker Invitational, shout out to CPT. You know, they got you in the mix for that great Super Bowl event that we were a part of there. And it seems like the offers are rolling in. I mean, you know, I'm getting a lot of offers for these stream stuff now, too. How are you even approaching that with your position as someone is who's going to be invited to any TV game where now, you know, you got a soft lineup, too? Yeah, honestly, it's not really my thing that much. Like, I really love showing up to Bellagio and even even some of these like reserved games. It's it's what is kind that? Of what does that mix. mean? Reserved game? <clears throat> it's like a private game essentially running in a in a poker room okay reserve you know? game okay uh that's what they call them now like the okay. high the, the high stakes games when you have a lineup that's already set and pe- they run their own games like inside bobby's okay. room or table one or or whatever just asking for the fans who might be wondering what the reserve game is yeah but it, it, it makes i mean it makes it, sense right people want to play together but yeah go ahead can you want the live stream stuff it just feels like a bit too contrived for me that i don't particularly like all the time like the the whole reason that i got into making poker vlogs was to show family and friends what my life was actually like as a poker player mm-hmm. so then when you start just throwing in characters just because they're characters and you start like inserting drama and doing these things with like a fake breast that comes out and Come on, shout to Sashimi. Like, and you're, Come on, and you're, and you're just talking about <laughs> saying that um it's like poker's first reality tv show but it's all like a bunch of stuff that's all kind of planned and just to create drama. That's like the exact opposite of why I started doing what I was Mm. doing. So for me, I think it's great to get a bunch of new people to watch poker and grow the game, but I'm not personally inclined to do that stuff because it doesn't really feel authentic to my like poker career or like any ones, you know, mm-hmm. like you have to be a personality to get invited to these games. And so the opportunities are great, uh, but it just seems, I don't know, not, not quite a hundred percent for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're definitely a different kind of personality than most of the new creators. I gotta say you're very different than most of the new creators. These new creators, they're like content creators. Yeah. You are always a poker player in my in my mind to me. Yeah, right? I would I mean I, I would argue like I would argue you are a great content creator too, but yeah, no. your personality is more very reserved, like kind of laid back, pretty yeah. chill. And some people may have even used that to your detriment and say, well, he's not this loud in your face guy. Like well, how does he how does he have seven or three thousand people watching him? But I think that you represent a very like a person that a lot of people are just chill. That's what they like. They like a chill yeah. person. They and, don't. And I think that's why I'm not really, I'm not good on stream. Cause I'm not, I'm not really like interested in just doing a bunch of crazy shit just to I do see. it. And I feel like there's pressure to do that. And so when I do that and it goes wrong, I'm like even more frustrated with myself. Mm. Cause I'm like, oh, I did this just to try to cater to this live stream to keep the people who are watching live like entertained and then when it so when it goes wrong it's just like super even more tilting because i'm like i didn't even do that for me i did that Mm. for these other people right Uh, i see whereas like when i'm filming for a vlog or playing a session for a vlog uh i i don't feel any pressure to or i don't feel as much pressure sometimes you'll have a session that's like pretty boring and i'm like fuck i i came into this knowing i was going to film today so maybe maybe i I have like a, something that's like borderline three bet or call, and maybe I just three bet just to ramp up the variance a little bit. But on a live stream, you sometimes you have thousands of people or sometimes like 10,000 or more that are just waiting for anything to happen, you know? <laughs> Wait, and then they're looking you. at like VPIPs and all this shit that like doesn't matter in a normal cash game session, uh-huh. but it does in, in these live streams. Uh, and that external stuff, I don't really... Uh, love all the time yeah yeah i mean i think back to that that high stakes game at the lodge last year when i went down there for the opening and yeah you were playing those high stakes games and yeah i mean it definitely you could tell right what you just described what is what we saw on screen during yeah well so the lodge is always i feel like even a little bit more pressure because we're we're part owners there and um so that week i i think i had lost like 10 sessions in a row which is like the most i had ever lost right before we started doing these <laughs> these streams at the lodge and the first day um it just it was just a it was a crazy day where 
I think we were supposed to play 2550, but it was like we had the straddle up to like 6400 or something. <laughs> we were playing uh, the Nick game for like 2K a person. Yeah, uh, it was getting out of line. And I won three hands the entire session. So it was our, our uh, stream debut. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't really in the mindset going into it to play high stakes and and the game ended up being much bigger than I thought. So I sold like 30% of myself and then I had a cap at like 100K loss and I ended up losing like 150K. So it was just like that extra 50K was like 100% on me. So I, I don't oh, know. Oh wow, yeah, that's even worse. <laughs> oh my God. Like such a um do you, do you feel like you got a better grasp of the of the mental strain playing on those stakes and maybe understanding what positions you thrive in in order to put yourself in those positions more often yeah i mean the the, the things that I thrive in are just a normal cash game inside a casino <laughs> not, not you know, a stream I, everyone's watching it's, yeah. it's just different when you're like on the flyer for the stream you know so yeah. people are tuning in specifically to watch you and if you're not getting involved in a hand or if you're not trying to pull off some kind of wild bluff yeah. uh people i feel like i'm letting them down so then i i try to try to do that stuff and then uh and then everybody's just trying to out crazy everybody <laughs> yeah so it's like it's chaos yeah i mean you saw that stream and, it, and it's super entertaining when there's like 500, 700K pots and stuff that Doug's getting involved in. Um, but it's just, I personally can't stomach these like <laughs> yeah, I mean, mid six figure swings. That's just not something that I'm at the level at uh, right now. And Doug can, because, you know, he's in a different spot financially for one thing, but also um, he, he just kind of embraces like that, that variance more. He's used to it. I mean, he's, he's had a lot of those high stakes swings playing a, some of the highest stakes heads up cash games and six max games. So he's used to having swings where, you know, to him, 300K, you know, not one say nothing, but it's something that he's done plenty of times and he's gonna yeah. do plenty more times in his mind. So I think he's able to, to process that. And that's what the difference between high stakes players sometimes is that, you know, it's kind of the same game, but a certain player can handle losing this amount. But once they go past that amount, they just have some sort of breakdown. Everybody has that point. Some people that can make it up to the highest stakes and be able to win they're just wired differently to be able to handle those swings. And I feel like Doug is, you know, the reason why he has had the success he's had is because he's been able to master his emotion somehow and dealing with that and and reframe it. So yeah. it's impressive. I mean, listen, I see, I see him down there pl playing. He's one of the biggest winners in the show. I think he might be the biggest winner, but people see him, you know, there's these clips that we put out on the Lodge's uh, social media where he just you know, blasting away with like ace four suited or whatever it was against um, yeah. Alex and uh, <laughs> Whoops. and it looks like he's just, you know, uh, just getting completely nuts. But um, yeah, there's a method to it and uh, he, it's, it's good marketing for him. Yeah. I, uh, you know, talking about um, the CBT event, I just mentioned that. So CBT event, kind of slowly poker tour. I got in touch with them uh, maybe in December, kind of figured out more about what they did. I got on my radar last year and they put together this in like kind of like online personality event with a bunch of creators who never play poker. And I was like, that's basically the kind of ideas poker really needs right now in order to get outside of the industry, get outside of the normal, you know, poker sphere. We got a bunch of poker shows. We got poker vloggers. We got poker media, but we don't really have a lot of these outside personalities playing as much outside of the creator games, which creator games had a lot of success. And I feel like they've really helped to grow poker. So I got in touch working with them on their last event and uh, we got you in the mix there as well. It seemed yeah. like you, um, you know, you, you were on three poker players in that game, but you were playing with NFL players. You're playing with um, a bunch of NFL players actually for the Super Bowl event. What was your uh, experience like in yeah. the mix at the at the Celebrity Poker Tour event yeah. for Super Bowl weekend? That was, it was, it was just really funny. You know, everybody, everybody's all dressed up like nicely and in some cool gear and uh i'm just you know some kind of <laughs> poker poker guy in a in a hoodie also a photo of our our outfit selection it, I mean, right it now really, it really looked like a like a red carpet event almost or something or like an mtv music awards type uh -huh. of thing where you have all these cool uh celebrities who are like really stylish and uh, a lot of really interesting personalities <laughs> A couple of them, it was fun, you know, came up and said, hey, man, I watch your vlog. It's really like I'm a football player. And I'm like, that's, oh, yeah, that's cool, oh, man. Uh, so, yeah. I, and then there were a couple of other uh, uh, YouTube guys that I that that watched the channel and, and reached out. Um, 
uh, Bryce Hall and uh, Tommy and uh, yeah, so it was cool. A couple of them I'd met before also, so it was good to reconnect. This guy, um, MJ Melendez, who's on mm -hmm. the on the Royals. Uh, one time when I was in Scottsdale, like I want to say about five years ago, he was in at spring training in Scottsdale with the Royals, and uh, we met at that point, and I hadn't seen him since. Um, but he said that he watched the channel and now, you know, he, he's doing, he's doing some pretty big things with, uh, with the Royals. So it's fun to follow his career and, and, uh, it, it was fun to play poker with them because they're just doing like wild stuff, but. Were they any good? I mean, are you, were you impressed or? The, uh, Calais Campbell, I thought he was the one who I played with who impressed me the most. He's, he's good. Um, but most of them, like a handful of them had played little to no poker before. So they were learning a lot of things on the fly. Mm -hmm. and it, it's a fast structure, so it kind of neutralizes um, any kind of big skill edge. Right. But everybody was just having a lot of fun. There were a lot of drinks and- uh, Everybody, yeah, yeah, a lot of drinks, a lot of good time. Like you said, they're, they're very, you know, the team that put that on, uh, Enclave and Key is the name of their company. They're very, they come from a very hospitality-based world, yeah. service-based world, the casino world in Vegas. So their goal with that event is to give the players this beautiful experience, partnerships, sponsors there, giving out free items, give put people together in a room and let some nice content be made. So I thought that was a good opportunity for you to kind of get more into working with the non-poker audience yeah. and then help maybe get some more exposure down that way. And um Seemed like you liked it because you're coming back for the next event, which is going to yeah. be on, I think, the 15th. So this should be out before the 15th. Yeah. the, the like a single, single table event. Just I, I'm a huge sports fan, so I, I really have a lot of kind of admiration for athletes. And when I'm around them, I just kind of get excited and it's really fun for me. And mm -hmm. I'm not really in that opportunity where I get to just be in a room with, you know, all all these people that are uh, kind of big in their own industry. So that was pretty awesome. It's exciting. Yeah, right? it was. Yeah, it was I a mean, way different energy in the air. And it was hilarious to see some of the stuff that people were doing. Um, and and that's the thing is like, these guys are doing such crazy outlandish stuff all the time. And there's so many of them that they're the ones that are gonna kind of build up these enormous stacks almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, I mentioned at the beginning, you're having the, the child this week and, you know, it's going to be a very moment, a moment, obviously, for your life. How do you envision balancing the opportunities, the card room, the content, the cash games, the tournaments, the fans? How do you envision balancing all that? It It is pretty tough to balance all that stuff between the traveling and like you said, yeah, I mean, there's so many things going on right now. Um, but but I, I want to be, uh, it's hard because like, you just never know how long this stuff is going to last for, how long people are going to be interested in the YouTube channel and all that. So it's hard to not kind of seize like every opportunity while they're available. Um, but also I want to be present as a dad. So balancing that is pretty tough, but luckily uh, my partner, Amber, she's amazing and, and she's like really understanding. Um, yeah, we're gonna have the baby and then a couple of days later she's like yeah you should go play this this uh cpt uh event or whatever and then she she gave me the green light to go to the lodge for the lodge championship series and uh, a couple other things so um you know mm. there's, it, it, i i just want to make sure that i'm there and I, that she doesn't get stressed out but like I'm, I'm trying to provide for all of us and our two stepdaughters or my two stepdaughters her, her two daughters so it, it is a lot and i don't even like put the family stuff you know on the vlog or talk about it yeah but uh yeah there's always kind of a lot going on in the house man always always and like you said i mean you bring up a good point which is that and we could argue this is why you're getting these opportunities now is you have seized that moment you haven't let up you have been locked in you've been performing at the cash games you've been performing on these different opportunities you've been getting and as you said right now you don't want to let it up i guess the only downside is that once you, you it never it's always going to be there you're always yeah. going to get more opportunity you're always going to be able to to scale your stakes or scale your opportunity or to scale your business or your investments and you know, it becomes on like a personal option. And now, you know, you in a position where, like you said, if you lay off the break or if you lay off the gas, then who knows if this, this position's ever gonna be there again, you know? And I think it's any relatable for anyone who's had a lot of success at what they're doing, you know, 
at what yeah. point do we say we've we've had that success and maybe we do something else yeah that's a good thing about the lodge and just uh kind of expanding my horizons and uh having equity in different companies because that way you know ideally these companies are are making money for us uh, mm -hmm. where we don't have to be there putting in the hours um in order for it to be successful all the time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, it kind of depends what business you have equity in. If you're getting a, a payout as a shareholder, if you're getting a dividend, or, you know, some companies are just reinvesting all the money back in. So that's if you're- That's what the Lodge is doing. I yeah. mean, a lot of people think, oh, okay, well, if Brad loses 10,000, 20,000, why, getting should, the rakers why should I care? Because he's just making all this money from the Lodge. And that's not the case at all. You know, we're, we, I love being a part of it, but um, our goal is to, you know, expand and make that property and future properties as good as possible. So we're not taking any money out of it for years. a while. Yeah. I mean, and you know, obviously when you have equity, when you're an investor in a company, you're betting on that equity increasing some multiple percentage, you know, whether in this yeah. case, we don't really know, you know, what the valuation is. So if you say a 10 million valuation, if you're going to be able to get it to a hundred million valuation, you got to really think about how we're going to do that. We got to have big social media channels. We got to have more rooms. We got to have a bigger database. We got to have these certain characteristics, certain revenue, certain numbers that'll match up. And even yeah. then, and that's the best case scenario, right? Your 10X and you're like, you're, you know, like it, it, in the investing world, depending on how much you own and, and how you structure those deals, it, it's, you know, it's not really what it appears to be. Yeah. When but, you, when you think about, oh, this guy owned a card room, like it. it yeah. You know. Luckily, you know, Doug is really, really sharp with so much of this stuff. And he puts in so much effort that people just don't see. Um, He's a machine. Just going all over the state and like doing research and all these different legal things and city ordinances and all that stuff. And um, he, 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 with Mike Brady and a handful of other people. Shout out Jake. Like, I know Jake out there grinding. We just have such a such an awesome team that uh, I, I feel really good or like as good as I could about kind of the future of the lodge and uh, all the all the all the card rooms that were hopefully going to open up mm -hmm. in the next, well, in the upcoming future, I, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? You know, I had Doug on the show and you know, last week and he talked about expansion and bringing the lodge to different locations and makes so much sense, you know, right? Like, what do we wanna do as a poker player? We wanna be able to play in a comfortable environment with a fair rake, with good security, with people that we think care about us and have our best interest at heart. And it's not always that easy to find. And I feel like you guys are trying to provide that for the customers down there at the lodge, you know, whether it's true or not at the end of the day, who knows? But from my vantage point, it appears that way. And I think that we need more of that in poker. We need people that have our interest out the players have the interest of the players, not the interest of how do we take all these guys' money and, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's eleven dollars an hour at the at the lodge, so um, it, it's tough to it's tough to beat that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so we got the lodge, and obviously, lodge been going well. You've been kind of playing on some streams. I feel like you haven't been playing that many that many shows though. What's what's been your approach with playing uh, on the stream at the lodge? Um, I, when I'm in town, I play, uh, I think I was there in January for two weeks. I played two or three times on the stream. Mm -hmm. Um, those, I think they were doing some tournaments while I was there as well. And I did, oh uh, yeah. So I played at least three times because yeah, I did play one tournament. Yeah, I see you post on your, sto your story a lot. You know, always, you always go down there and like put in the work. <laughs> like, uh, you're yeah. not, you're not getting barbecue that much. You're like grinding. <laughs> yeah. When I went, when I went there in January, I played 12 or 13 days straight, uh, I, I try to make the most of my time when I'm out there and um, there, it's just cool. There's a lot of people that come in from all over, you know, whether it's different parts of Texas or some people see that I'm there and they'll fly in from like other states or Canada or whatever. So uh, how does that feel when you, you have these fans who are coming from Canada? They're coming from Canada to your card room <laughs> in Round Rock off the freeway. They come in there to hang out with you and see you and play with you. How does that feel? It's cool. Yeah, I, I always, yeah, I mean, so today we'll, we'll get into this story. This isn't specific to the lodge, but it's just kind of how I approach it, where uh, there was this guy I met after, after my session at Bellagio. I lost 24K today. I won 25K yesterday in, in the big game in Bellagio, but I lost almost all of it back today. So I was feeling pretty low. It was yeah. my biggest loss ever at Bellagio. Um, but 
there was this guy who, you know, I, I, I think that I saw him kind of like peeking through the, the glass and stuff in Bobby's room. And um, you kind of get the sense that they're a viewer or whatever. So uh, as, I'm, as I'm on my way out, he starts telling me how um, he teaches college students and, and, and somehow he, he uh, uses my vlogs to teach them how to have like healthy vices or something like that. It was really interesting. I don't know. But he, he, he brought up this picture of, um, of uh, him and like seven or eight students. They were all wearing, uh, there's no right way to play Jiggity shirt. So uh, shout out to those guys. But yeah, they, these people, they might have 30 seconds or a minute to spend with you and they may never meet you or see you ever again. So even though I lost 24,000 today, just wanted to try to make that interaction as good as I could, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I personally wasn't feeling very good, but, um, you know, you try to try to smile, always happy to take a photo and, and do that stuff. Cause I, I just want people to not feel like they were let down, like in that one moment. Right. Cause that's the only me. time that they're going to see you. Yeah. The only time they're going to meet you. I try to be that same way when I meet people, I know that they come up and you're like, Hey, I'm like, Oh, okay. Right. You know, I gotta, you gotta be nice. You gotta be respectful. I'm, I'm trying to treat people. I want to be treated how I want other people to treat me. Yeah. So, and obviously, you know, if you, if you're not in that good mood, they're going to remember that. Oh, Brad was an at, he, he was so rude. And even though you're like, Hey, I just, even though you and your mind, I just lost 25 K like I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to like take a walk and yeah clear my head a little bit. And then you have somebody who it's their moment to see you. So you got to make a decision. And yeah. I feel like your fans really appreciate that too. You know, I feel like yeah. that doesn't go unrecognized out of, out of your community. Yeah, I, I there's a, I have a bunch of photos of me. Uh, I went to the Heads Up Championship in like 2009. Um, I think it was like March or something like that. Uh, maybe it was 2010. And I, I remember taking <laughs> pictures with like Dennis Phillips and, uh, yeah, OG though, and Moneymaker know. and Scotty Wynn. Like that was me, man. I, I loved taking photos. I, I was just such a big poker fan at that time yeah. and meeting those guys and, and having those moments with them was something that was really special for me. So uh, I just try to remember that when I'm able to like, you know, pay it back, I guess. Yeah. How does that, so how does that feel when, you know, you think about the fan you were who was looking up to the poker players and now you're one of the main guys who fans are coming to look up to and to, you know, whatever, right? I mean, a whole bunch of range of emotions. It's, it's a little bit, it's weird for me because the guys that I looked up to all won stuff <laughs> and I've like, well, you won, never... you won YouTube. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's stuff, a pretty big thing that, well, you know, you won yeah. the cash games, you've been playing yeah. a lot of different cash games over the years, like you yeah. said, moving at different stakes. Like that's, but that matters to me. The guys that I look up to are still like the guys that, that crush, you know, I was talking about Kuhn and, and Petrangelo and those guys, like I still really look up to those guys and uh, have so much respect for them and what they've been able to accomplish. And I've had some tournament success and I, you know, I've had a lot of cash game success and everything, but uh, I guess until I start really winning a lot of things um i'm always gonna feel like it's weird like they like me for what i've been able to do on youtube but i wish i was able to have that success in uh in poker tournaments probably poker tournaments yeah like, well that's the cool stuff for me like and the poker players that i look up to are all like right the stud yeah guys yeah so you mentioned, obviously, we talked earlier about the you know family and now balancing and adjusting. And you mentioned some events you're going to play. And I know WPT, they got the upcoming voyage going on, which I don't think you'll be able to make it yes. due to your family. But what's uh, you know what's your thoughts on WPT, in my opinion, taking a pretty big swing here? They rented out the entire Virgin Voyage boat and they are going to have cash games there. They're going to have tournaments there. They told me that on the boat, free food on the boat, there's parties on the boat, there's performances on the boat. It looks pretty sick. Like, I'm, I'm not a cruise guy. You know, Herman, Stroud, Herman, she's been pitching me on the cruise since last June. Poppy, we need you on the cruise, Poppy. We need you on the cruise. Oh. And I, 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 I like, I, you know, I just don't understand stand it, but what are your thoughts about the voyage, the cruise? It looks like a pretty pretty aggressive swing from from a company, World, World Puppet Tour. Andrew and I, we went on this, uh, on the ship, um, a year and a half ago, it was just kind of like a trial run. And I think they had 90 cabins set aside for uh, WPT uh, people mm -hmm. or whatever. And so this is the first time they're doing it with the full ship. So this is going to be 
pretty just a, it's just going to be insane and i wish i could go on it but yeah i've got the baby due um in a couple of days in in two days mm -hmm. so uh being being kind of like on a ship and not being able to get back home in case there was some kind of an emergency or something um yeah seven, wasn't seven days yeah yeah what do you think about the moves the uh, wpd is making i mean i feel like this voyage is it's it's like it's aggressive because they launched yeah. the championship event that went extremely well in my opinion right really established itself as that december event series and now something that um, i know every year i'm looking forward to going there already so but now they're launching the voyage which is a couple months after that it's like they want to call it like the spring break and uh yeah. i think it's i think it's a crazy play i mean not to say you know it's aggressive yeah i think there's a little bit of downtime in between the world championship and the voyage stuff and it's just kind of a different uh it's just a different vibe you know i mean you're going to these uh very exotic locations and um it's just a different feel on a ship and it's all poker players what are they i think it's going to get pretty pretty uh out of line out of line, out of line. what are they Andrew I, thinks it's going to get really out of line i He's think going, these cash games are going to be some of the softest games ever because everyone's going to be yeah. like and, dude and the cool thing about this is that they're really doing it with um kind of the players in mind you know uh i think yeah i, I, don't, I don't really want to get any of the details wrong but just with I know a lot of them now. But Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Just doing a deep like dive. The video rake right is now. like a lot less than you would normally see on, on any type of a cruise. And, uh, you know, there's a 5K main event to get your name on the Mike Sexton Champions Cup. I mean, that's pretty cool to have that opportunity. I'm curious to see who ends up playing the 25K. I think that'll uh, get a lot of like interesting uh, poker personalities. And, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of excited to see how it goes. Yeah, what's I, the party? The party stuff is something that I'm excited to see videos of. I, I just feel like people are going to be getting hammered and then playing big cash games. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll be. I heard when Rob Young told me he got a game going on. So he he let me know that they got they got move, motion down there. So, oh, yeah. That's what he said. He's like, yeah, you go. And I said, I, don't, I'm, I said, I'm going to figure out my living situation. Maybe I'm still I'm still in the fence to be on that boat. I still might be on that boat, but you should go. I feel yeah. like. Yeah, it's it'll be a really cool experience. And when I went, the the food is really good. The locations were cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I I really want to, like I said, I keep, I I want to win a major tournament. So every time I miss an opportunity to play one of these like WPT mains, it kind of yeah, like, like the ones you should play. I know, right? I mean, if you're gonna play any, those are like the ones to play. What's yeah. it What's it been like working with WPT? It's getting on, you know, it's kind of time's been adding up. I think, uh, how long have you been with them officially? Uh, almost two years. Almost two years. So what's it been like working with the World Poker Tour? For me, I've loved it. I, I, I feel like WPT has kind of the biggest upside and it's already, in my opinion, better than the WSOP stuff. WSOP is so fun in the summer. Everybody comes out, but they're really doing a lot of stuff to like liquidate kind of their value of bracelets. I mean, I don't even know how many bracelets they have. Um, no, I don't sure. want to talk too much about that, but yeah. uh, I just feel like WPT is really trying to push the envelope and do really cool things. I mean, you have a $40 million guarantee in December, but yeah, I, never know. I, I want to, I do want to, I do feel like we should talk about the, the WPT world championship a little bit more just because like that is, that is my favorite festival is what they call it. Uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I love, I love just it. Like at the win you yeah. have just everything is so nice at the win. You just can't really beat that property. And then Matt Savage does a really good job. And um, the entire team, I mean, I feel like the win team, you know, the win is, is my preferred place. So I had my first event with during one of the, the championship series there. They, that casino specifically is very hospitable. They're, they're very service focused. They're very experience focused and they want to give everybody a good time. And they hire people who have that mission too. And you see that in the poker room. That's been, that's why I, I played so much there. Like they treat you well, they're, dealers are good they try to have a certain quality level and i feel like that's why the partnership with wpt makes so much sense to me because wpt i've been getting to know them you know following adam pliska on social media i feel like you learn a lot about people on instagram you know you see what kind of what they, at least they want to portray their public perception they want to portray and it starts with your leaders man and you yeah. need a good leader at the top and that guy i love that guy man he, yeah. he's he's a guy that I think he really tries to put his team on, tries to you know elevate from within and tries to build a certain culture of excellence and achievement and a certain quality of work that we often don't see in poker. I feel like we are some other people that are taking that that approach now that I, I have a lot of respect for too. And um, you know, you can see that in terms of the output. They they create this 
I've been out of nowhere in December and all of a sudden now has $38 million prize pool for the second year. I mean, it's pretty impressive, right? You know, with all the side events that go on around it and basically just make up an entire new part of the poker calendar. Yeah, it's something that I'm just, a, it's just a team that I'm really proud to be a part of and Adam does crush it and he takes everything in stride, you know, um, just. He seemed like he have a good time. So I like about him. He seems like he likes to have a good time. You know, he go into a safari, he dressing up in costumes. But then when the event happens, he's in the suit, he's locked in, he's a professional guy. You know, he's got that whole corporate background experience where that's kind of how he, he was. He's, he's been with WPT since day one, I, I think believe. So. I think yeah, talked, he, yeah, I think he started as a lawyer for WPT. And, uh, you know. I think he was going to go to the White House or something like that. He was going to be like a. He was going to go to the White House. He was going to like work work in law or in, in one of those, in like that whole political world. Oh, really? And then he got it with the World, World Poker Tour. And now he's been living the life since then for 20 some years, man. What are your <laughs> What are your fans called? The Brad Cyples or no, what? No, there's what not do, anything. There's nothing. What do we uh, call your the, fans? I don't know. Let's give him a name. What about it? What do you think about I a name? Know. I don't what know. What do you guys think about, about a name for the for the Brad's fans? I feel like people have tried to do this before. And the Brad Eiples, the Brad Brad Cyples. Yeah, sounds no, bad. I'm just throwing things out there. What about the, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. But yeah, you've, yeah, been, been, you've been partying a lot. Are you, so let's get, are we, are we able to talk about uh, your personal life at all? Yeah, or? if you want, if you want, go ahead. Go so, ahead, yeah. so you're, you're, you know, now. single now again. Single now. I was dating a girl for a while. I think she's nice. She's, 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 she's wonderful. She's beautiful. She's sweet. She's loving, you know, she, she, it was either we really had a family or we went our separate ways. So and is that something that's important to you at some point to have a family? I would say before her, it wasn't important. I never thought much about it. I kind of just like, like my poker playing kamikaze lifestyle you know I've never really like taken this stuff too seriously you know I moved to Vegas eight years ago and I'd say when I lived here I kind of put myself into relationships I really like wasn't focused on content that much or poker that much and I just really was like comfortable in the, in the kind of cycle that I built for my life and up until recently until I met her she put in the idea in my head of why don't you have a kid why don't you have bloodline why don't you have that and I was like Bloodline. Why well, I, I, I use that word, but you know, <laughs> she really didn't. But I, I used the word. I was like, yeah, I want the best blow at the <laughs> plus bloodline. It's like the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I'm thinking, right? I'm like, how do I get the banking bloodline? You know, but yeah, I would say uh, before that I wasn't, but now now I'm in, I'm open to it with the uh, right person. How old are you? Thirty eight. Thirty eight. Yeah. I mean, so you have so many things kind of um, in like ducks in a row, right? Like you're well established in this industry and you can like the biggest thing for me is being able to financially take care of another human, which is a pretty big, pretty big thing task. to take on. Yeah. Well, I would say for me, I wanted to make sure I had the right partnerships in place on the finance side Yeah. in terms of who I'm working with behind the scenes and the companies I'm working with publicly. Because for me, you know, there really aren't many companies you can work with that are going to pay you a lot of money in poker unless it's a poker gaming site, like a WPT, a GG Poker, an ACR, or something that they're making rake fees. Those are the people that are really gonna be able to give you big deals because you're able to, and then the, you, they give you big deals because you're making their company money by sending your players there. And I feel like for me, if I'm gonna send someone there, I wanna be able to play in America, which in America is only a couple options. And then, you know, I just haven't found that right fit. Like, I mean, there's training site options. I'm talking with G2 Wizard right now. We're about to close something out with them and, um, but besides that, I just don't see that that company that I feel like is going to get me to the point of upgrading my business unless it's maybe one of three or one of five. So right now, I'm basically just waiting to get that in motion before I decide, you know, because I don't think my fans are, are, in the, are in a position. Once I start really studying how it works, you know, I never really took it, took went that deep on it. But now I'm I'm deep on it and I'm like. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting more into the investor mindset. Yeah, that, you you brought up an interesting point where just like really, there's so few kind of brand ambassador roles now compared to how many there used to be. There were just so many red pros on full tilt that you're just like, who the fuck are these guys? At least I felt like mm -hmm. that. Like I remember, uh, yeah, I, don't, I guess I don't really want to say, but um, I remember playing at Red Rock with like some guy who was a um, he was a full tilt red pro, and I was like, I've never. Like, how did you get that deal? Yeah, I mean, back in the day, they were handing them out. And, and you know, it was, it was a place you could play in America. And I really want to promote something that my fans can play. And I got a lot of fans all over the world, but most of the Legion is in America. You got to be with these companies that you, um, 
there were a lot of companies that reached out to Andrew and I uh, before we signed with WPT and they just didn't really quite seem like the right fit where there were different ones where we could have made a ton of money and probably like way, you know, probably a lot more money to be honest. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, but you, you just have to be selective it's scary, bro, Not because you don't know these people. You don't know what they're doing to the software. You don't know what they're doing to the, your customers that you're sending them. And you have to put your faith that these casino operators are going to be treating your fans with care and love and respect. And, you know, I've been in Vegas now for a while and I don't I don't think that's what's happening with most of these people. So for me, I'm, I'm sort of saying like. I've been taking deep dives in casino world because I really want to get into the casino world. I want to invest in casinos and. You know, I would say poker is a priority, but the general casino itself is more of a priority for me now. And I've been learning about the mindset of casino operators and casino executives. And it's not like <laughs> maybe some people think that way, but I don't think most people are going to think about it like that. How maybe me and you think about what we're promoting to our fans, what we're promoting to our audiences. So for yeah. me, for better or worse, I take that shit way too seriously. And I'd rather... You know, I say I like I'd rather just make have to do something else in my life than than have to get to that point where that's what I feel like I got to be doing. Yeah, I want to I want to have my a Vegas card room casino. I want to have the Legion casino. I want to have the Legion poker room. It just seems so hard to get. So makes it fun. up and running. And so makes it fun. What is my eye? What's I mean, it? would this be somewhere like right off the strip or on the strip, or what do you envision with this? Bro, I envision it in the where you know Bellagio is. That's yeah. where I envision it, right at the Bellagio. Okay. Right, right in the middle of the strip. You know, whether it's in with a partnership with an existing company, whether it's you know, because Eric Person basically just did the same thing, where he bringing Ma he's bringing Maverick Gaming into partnership with Bally's, and he's going to have Maverick Gaming rooms or Maverick Gaming some sort of you know, representation with his room inside of that property. So I don't see why some properties here wouldn't want to do that because every poker room needs help. And most of these casinos, if, if they understood the power of poker marketing, like you understand it, right? Your life has been changed forever and your family's life potentially has changed forever because of poker content. Mm -hmm. So think of how power, like people like it don't really understand it. And I know how they don't understand it because I don't see anybody talking about this. And now with this poker marketing, you're able to create so much content, so many impressions and promotion for your company and so many opportunities for influencer marketing with essentially anybody that's kind of interested in poker that you can bring all those people to your room, to your property. And I don't think enough people realize that because they don't really understand poker. But once a Vegas casino embraces it, no one's embraced it yet. Once they embrace it, we're going to see a change. And Venetian might be the first one. So we'll see. Are you talking with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met with them. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. pretty big, especially since they, you know, they historically haven't been uh, they don't have the best track record with the poker community. Well, so maybe maybe he, you can help turn that around. He's Tommy's a new ownership. I already researched the new owners. You research them yourself. Apollo Capital Management. These, these are different kind of these are private equity groups. So their goal oh, okay. is to raise the evaluation and sell it for more in a few years. So private equity wow. strategies are usually like a certain year interval time, like five, eight years, something like that. And they're just taking over the poker They operations? invested a billion dollars into, into the properties and they are shifting the poker room from downstairs to the second floor. So that yeah. prime real estate, I mean, it has prime real estate down there for slot machines. And if you do square foot by like square foot by profit or something like that, like there's some calculation the casinos have where, you know, clearly you should probably have your most profitable machines right there by the door and people walk in, you don't want them to walk into poker, you want them to walk into the slots. So, but they still want to keep the poker room. So they're building an entire new poker room upstairs, second floor. It's like the connection from Palazzo to the Venetian inside of the mall. And inside that they want to build a stream room. Is it like next to the food court in there? No, the food court's a little bit down more. It's right by Sushi Samba. It's right by the karaoke place. Ah, okay. It used to be this barbecue place that was underrated. I don't think a lot of people went there, but um they're taking all that space out and putting in a big poker room putting in a lot of cash games putting in a lot of tournament tables and right. then having a place for creators and having a place for streams all right that should be pretty cool then could be but they need the right people you're the right people i don't know i mean i don't know if i want to be the guy building it all and doing it all i was like man this is what a what a lot what an opportunity this is pretty sick opportunity because i've known tommy for a long time he runs that room there and he's always been he seems like he loves his shit. yeah he's so focused he's been He's built, he takes so much pride in having like a real beautiful tournament series at the Venetian and having a great room. And I know he wants to do that well. And they're investing a lot of money in this new room. 
So he's got to do well. Like they don't have a choice. They got to perform. Otherwise, someone's got to answer for it. It's going to be him, right? He's the guy leading the room. He's got to make sure that this is a banger if they're going to invest all this money in a new room. So I think they're motivated. And um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like the right group to work with because they, they got money to invest a casual billion into the property. Well, what if they go, hey, I mean, I like this. Here's a hundred million. <laughs> like, it's not to say it's it's not that unrealistic if they see an ROI for selling that asset for more money in the future. So hopefully, I'm I'm always kind of rooting for poker projects to go well, but there's just been a handful of things about that so property so in particular that have been frustrating. Like they didn't so pay the guarantee. Yeah, you know they historically basically did everything they could to get online poker well that, uh, that's because the last ownership right and you right. could argue a lot of those people are still in position of power there and they're still yeah. executives and there's still maybe that they, culture they didn't allow vlogging or like even pictures they were like the hardest on any kind of poker content stuff so it seems well, that's like not, that's that's all done now yeah so that'll be i mean i'm glad to see that but I'm you, got PTSD. Kinda, you got ptsd i see it's like when gonna, poker star it's like a poker star has got new owners and came in and made all these promises you'd say oh, let me like see it first okay like let me yeah, I'm gonna kind of see. I, yeah, I hope they do well. I hope they uh, treat the poker community well, and and then kind of go from there. Yeah, I'm, I, I I like your uh, more reserved thought process on it because I'm obviously excited because you know I'm in like um, investment mode. So that means you always got a bright vision for the future when you're thinking about it as an investor. You're looking at what's the best case scenario. If I invest in this room, what's the best case scenario for that stream? Well. It's the biggest stream on the planet in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip was some of the biggest games that ever happened in Dude, Vegas. I think it's so hard to... What kind of viewership is 52 getting? I don't think they're doing much live anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think they're... I think they're more recording. They're putting stuff on CBS Sports. Oh, uh, really? They're huh. not doing much live live, live content right now. Oh, okay. They're, they're, yeah, they're using a different strategy. I think they're inviting a lot of people over there to make content for their channels. So they make content for their channels. They make content for CBS Sports maybe a special occasion live stream, but they're looking to do events. They're looking to do more live streams, but you know, it's hard to get consistent games. It's hard to build up that momentum. You need like a big room. You need a lot of people. You need a lot of support. You need a lot of things going your way. Yeah, it just seems like there's a lot of, seems like there's a good amount of streams now. Um, I remember- So many. There were gonna be, you know, I don't even know how many there were supposed to be in Vegas, but like someone was telling me about like three or four that were like coming out here and Venetian one is one that I, you know, just heard about in the last week or two weeks. Uh, so it, it'll be interesting to see how many streams Las Vegas can support. Like right now, all these high stakes, uh, there, there's like competing high stakes games basically in Vegas. There's like three of them, you know, yeah. there's, there's table one, your Bobby's room, and then you have the win and they're all fighting for players. It's just tough to find people who are willing to play like really really big games and um and to keep it sustainable sending, and then yeah i'm uh, sending this to the venetian they're gonna know they gotta have a budget now because that's what i mean like now you gotta uh, agree well then now what do you do that's when you need a budget that's when you need a better strategy that's when you need to give players an experience you need to start spending some money and investing it on relationships with these people which is kind of what those games do you know, those mm -hmm. games are building their relationships in different ways. Maybe they're taking them to Carbone. Maybe they're taking them to the hockey game. You know, if you're at the win, maybe we all go out to SW. Maybe we all get a table at XS. You know, maybe we get you a suite upstairs and, you know, certain people are in the suite having a good time with you. So you are utilizing the resources and assets you have around the game to provide. That's the competition, right? That's where that's when that's in my opinion. What makes it great? Like, I love I love that. I love it yeah. when there's. There are people competing for this, for that. You know, it ain't always fair and it don't always make you happy. But, you know, things like that really push things forward as well, too, in my opinion. Not to say, you know, for the better or worse. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. I think I, I hope they really like cater to the players and offer something that's uh, really cool to to keep players coming back and play on the streams. But, um, but I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I see what you're saying, right? It, there are so many streams. Like they're like even too many. Yeah. And, and you have to compete with like the regular high stakes games that are running in Vegas, you know? True. Yeah. Um, so if you try to do a high stakes stream, then, you know, you got to pull, you assume your regulars are going to be pulled from these other games. So you yeah. got to get them out of that game. I mean, if the game's good, then why would they want to leave? Yeah. I think it's just, a, it's just not that big of a player pool. Like even some of these games, um, like Bobby's room, like this guy, he flies in like every couple of days from Southern California and stuff. 
uh, just I don't know. It's just not that not that many people are willing to play that big. Yeah, that's going to be the, that's what I that's what I tell every you know every room is that your ability to secure those players and have a strategy to secure those players is a big part of the challenge. And it seemed like the lodge has done pretty great at that with Doug. Yeah. And Doug's been able to really yeah. you know Skull Mike's been able to do those things. And I'm sure everyone pitches in down there. Yeah, it's like more. It seemed like a community effort down there where everyone's trying to make the best games. Yeah, Skull Mike does a really good job with the lineups, and obviously Doug has a bunch of connections. Um, but I think LA, you know, LA is great because the population is so big and there's so many poker players out there. LA is really like, you know, I don't know how many of the top 10 biggest rooms are in the Los Angeles area, but it seems like almost half of them have to be like yeah. commerce, gardens, um, you know, all those places, hustlers, big, they have a lot of, anyway, there's just like a lot of people that have a lot of disposable income. So they're, their player pool to to play like these high stakes streams games um massive is is a lot there's so many games there yeah. are, are underground overground now they got the second live stream um commerce just went, launched out there with bally's and oh, you know yeah, yeah there's a lot they, yes lynn lynn, <laughs> yeah, know, like, lynn g just invited me to play the commerce yeah she um, texted me too yeah she was like oh, you want to come play i'm like uh i'm not going to la for a bit but yeah she's trying i mean listen that's what you takes it takes a girl like lynn g to say hey i'm gonna go through my network of people and say, how do I get them here to play in these games? Because that's what they need. They need people that can build the games. Everyone's got a game builder. Every stream needs a game builder. So you gotta have, and that's a gift. Not everybody's got that gift. Not everybody's yeah. got the ability to wrangle these psychotic, wealthy people that to play high stakes poker on a stream. It's really, it ain't that easy. And it's just, there's a lot of last minute cancellations. It's kind of like an art that goes into just cultivating any high stakes game, but particularly on stream, because a lot of people commit and then they're just like, "Oh yeah, my you know so and so yeah, got sick my or car, whatever." Car had gas in it. <laughs> yeah, they come up with every excuse in the book to flight. not play, but really it's like, yeah, I just don't want to. You know, I I thought this sounded like a fun idea, and usually they want to help out whoever's putting the game together, but then once it they start getting cold feet and they're like, "Do I really want to play high stakes? Do I really want to?" put out like everything that I do in the universe and have people see how I play high stakes, mm. all those kind of things. Um, do I want to lose six figures in front of thousands of people? And then with all the views that it gets on social media and YouTube and clips clip and everything about me, like how that. I'm a fish that I lost a hundred. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, well, you sell them the other way. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't play much on the stream because I, I, I played on stream before and it, it's not always fun. So yeah, but you, Stressful. Do, you, you know, you're, great commentary guy and uh do the Love commentary fireside chats and stuff at the lodge which is fun well that actually you know that leveled me up into doing the fire the, the hustler game chats and then i did an actual fireside chat at a conference oh yeah where i interviewed the head of blockchain at microsoft yeah you're you're, you're so that, great at that stuff i yeah, I, remember, I love the interviews the, the well, you were doing that stuff for on um, the creator game and all that the hustler i forgot about that, that was yeah. pretty cool yeah yeah so what are your what are your goals now for poker content? And then do you have any poker goals or are you just is it just content? Uh, my and, poker goals, I mean, I, my goal is to be a god of, of the game, a god of hold'em right now, a god of yeah. two card. And then also, you know, in the process, my four card getting a lot better, just understanding, working with my coaches, working with the best tools. So I'd say my goals are more investment focused to be the best investor on the planet. I yeah. look at a Warren Buffett as an inspiration for me nice. to be um, one of the best investors. And I know it's a very long game and obviously, you know, that sounds unrealistic to people, but uh, that's my goal. So I would say that I want to be great at poker. I want to be positioned to be playing any poker game and do well with content. My goal is to make some of the best content of all time, um, the best shows of all time, have conversations that are really high quality for people that really listen to them and kind of merge all that together. So it's not necessarily with numbers or metrics. It's, it's more of like just put up the best content I can, work with people I really like, invest in companies that I really believe in, and I think everything's going to work itself out with the financial side of things and then the metrics and all that, you know, all that comes, all that's going to be there for me. So yeah, I think that's like a good North star to have with it. Focus on that and um, just put, put the passion into what I'm doing, what I'm making, like talking with you, like I love talking with you, right? This is like, I'm, I, I this is kind of stuff I think that is what I love to do. So I got to figure out a way to do more of this. Sometimes you got to cut it down here. You know, it's sure, all about yeah. edit. It's all about this and that. And that's going to decide what the views are. That's going to decide, what the metrics are and what the perception is. But 
for me, I just love doing content that I enjoy. I love talking to people I like, and um, I'm gonna do more of that. that that's a big yeah, goal. That's that's how I am too with a lot of stuff. Like I don't really do a lot of podcasts for one, because I think that a lot of it comes uh, down to me telling my story and, and a lot of that stuff I wanna save for my own channel and everything. But yeah, I like, I basically just do podcasts with people that I that I like and am friends with and stuff because then it's yeah. just way more fun. Do you set goals for your channel or, or do you have like a million, you have a million subscriber goal or how do you? Yeah, the million subscriber goal is uh, just, it, it's just nice to have a good long-term goal to keep me going. Um, but you know, my dad, he, he passed away like two years ago and uh, he like the last voicemail that he left me was a week or two it was a week before he died and he said you know at that time the channel was kind of going in like a, a little uh it was a little bit of a funk it was just something that was weird and he's like hey man just keep just keep going don't ever stop uh doing your primary channel and uh i i like for one of my videos at the end of it it was it was actually at a um, hustler meetup game I took that voicemail and I put like a bunch of clips. Um, mm, I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, and so it, it was just cool that he told me to just like never stop. And that was kind of the last- Last thing he said. Thing he said, really, yeah. yeah so yeah. I, for just to like keep that promise to him kind of a thing, um, I, I kind of never want to stop also. I hope not, I love it. Yeah, I love I love watching. I like seeing how high you can go. I mean, before we, me and Doug used to say the ceiling's 100k subscribers. <laughs> now you, you're like, yeah. what, how much you have? Seven? How many? Seven hundred? Yeah, a little over seven hundred. That's crazy, bro. Seven hundred thousand subscribers. It's crazy. Yeah, I love it, man. I mean, listen, I love seeing seeing you locked in. You know, it sounds like you got your goals for poker. You got your goals for content. You got the family goals coming up. So. You know, the next time maybe checking with you, you're going to be having that family rolling. You're going to be having these events rolling, and um, I'm going to be excited to follow along. I mean, yeah, let, let's get it. It's going to be a big week for you. It's going to be a great week for you. It's going to be a great year. And uh, yeah, two two days, man. Baby's coming in two days. So. Yeah. Last minute, not nervous at all. Or? <sighs> at this, yeah. I mean, the last like few days kind of hit me, but uh, Amber, she's a nurse practitioner, and she's had uh, she is two kids from the previous marriage. So she's like the veteran and ultimate safety net. So if I was going through this for the first time with somebody else who was going through it with, with the first time, then I would be way, way more nervous. But I'm just really confident in her ability to to do everything. Um, nice. That it makes it a lot easier. But yeah, the last couple of days I've been starting to get nervous and just thinking about how much life's gonna be different. And uh, really at this point, I just hope that the whole uh, birth process goes smoothly and uh, everyone yeah. comes out healthy. Well, listen, we're gonna be praying for you. I know the Legion out there, if they made it yes. this far, they're gonna be praying for you. And uh, always a pleasure, Poppy. Always good yeah. to see you. Guys in the chat, if you made it this far, appreciate you guys very much. Subscribe to Brad's channel, Mr. Brad Owen, and um, he's posting content everywhere. I'm posting content on my YouTube channel smash the like button the usual stuff comment below we'll be back soon and uh yeah shout out to everybody out there for support and shout out to gorilla gaming one of the sponsors on the channel you know gorilla gaming these guys are the best and um that's it see you guys later peace out